I'm so like doing 10 things. Good morning. Good morning. This is Lady TJ here on TNT Gospel Radio. Happy Friday. I'm going to make it a happy Friday today. I'm just trying to tell you I'm going through some things. We got death in the family and, you know, there's a funeral and a wake today and tomorrow. So I wanted to try and end this show with um, the forgiveness part, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, um, with some great, great speakers coming in, you know, talking about it, and I hope you're tuning in and listening in, this is Lady TJ here, right now, right now, it is 11, by my watch, yeah, I say 808, 11.08, it doesn't change around here, um, 11.08, 11.08, and it is Friday, so, um, what I need to do, I got the daily devotion before my guests come on. We are going to close out today um, on forgiveness. I don't know if you enjoyed it. Um, well, I, I, I shouldn't say it like that. I don't know if you have applied some of the things that you have heard on the show about forgiveness and how it benefits you more than anybody else and, um, and how true forgiveness is is something that God seeks for us to do. He, you know, we just have to do those kind of things. So let's get started. Let's just get started. Let's go to the Father and pray, and then we'll get on with the daily devotion. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, life, health, and strength. I don't know how to come to you today because it is... Uh, heart is heavy it's troubled i'm about to say farewell to an aunt that um that i love dearly and i pray that we can be you can have your arms around us comfort us and be there for us as we go through this weekend of 
um, sending her a homecoming. I pray that every person that seeks um, you, seek you with true, true, true identity, trying to get to know you more and more, trusting that you can take care of all things and that they can say they can do things with you. I pray that as these listeners are listening to this station, that they too will let their light so shine amongst anybody and everybody in this world and tell everybody, lost, unlost, just how how good you are. I pray that as the speakers come on to this show today, that they edify everybody um, and myself um, to a better understanding about this forgiveness thing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, I got a little sentimental there. I got a little sentimental. Um, um, I'm, people are talking to me. Okay, let me focus because I got, I got my Facebook people talking to me and I got other people trying to ask me stuff, different questions or whatever. Um, so um, today is um, Friday and we're talking about uh, forgiveness. So let me do this before my guests come on. Let me give you them. Let me give you their names. My first guest will be Brother Leonard Chapman Jr., He's going to be talking about um, forgiveness. And then I have brother Bobby L. Green. Now, if you know Bobby L., let me say um, Leonard Chapman Jr., he does the Chapman um, notes. He does his little um, commentations. He call them notes. I think that's what he called them. And brother Bobby L. Green Jr., he does these um, devotionals. And if you have not clued in and got yourself involved in his in their um chats and their their um devotions please please on facebook they he they post them every day they're motivating they're uplifting and the blessing is he's gonna let me read this one today um at the end of the show he's gonna let me read the one that he just put up ah so i'm gonna give you right now i'm gonna give you the daily devotion and daily devotion for the day is called using god Lady TJ in the house. Today's sunshine note is titled, Using God. At that time, Israel was at war with the Philistines. The Israelite army was camped near Ebenezer, and the Philistines were at Aphek. The Philistines attacked and defeated the army of Israel, killing 4,000 men. After the battle was over, the troops retreated to their camp, and the elders of Israel asked, Why did the Lord allow us to be defeated by the Philistines? Then they said, Let's bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh. If we carry it into battle with us, it will save us from our enemies. When all the Israelites saw the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord coming into the camp, their shout of joy was so loud, it made the ground shake. What's going on? the Philistines asked. What's all that shouting about in the Hebrew camp? When they were told it was because the Ark of the Lord had arrived, they panicked. The gods have come into their camp, they cried. This is a disaster. We have never had to face anything like this before. Help! Who can save us from these mighty gods of Israel? They are the same gods who destroyed the Egyptians with plagues when Israel was in the wilderness. Fight as never before, Philistines. If you don't, we will become the Hebrews' slaves, just as they have been ours. Stand up like men and fight. So the Philistines fought desperately, and Israel was defeated again. The slaughter was great. 30,000 Israelite soldiers died that day. The survivors turned and fled to their tents. The Ark of God was captured, and Hopni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli were killed. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. The text for today's devotional is longer than usual for a reason. I think it's important for us to recognize how dangerous it can be to use God without His consent. Being presumptuous in our faith can get us into all kinds of trouble. I've known many people who have told me things such as, God really wants me to enter into this business arrangement or God led me to this man or woman and wants us to be together. 
And then, when the business falls apart, or the relationship is not something that God has truly blessed, everything blows up in their faces. Then they blame God. God did not instruct Israel to go into the battle or to bring the ark into it. But Israel's leaders were corrupt and did what they wanted, and it blew up in their faces. God will not be mocked. Honor him and he will honor you. But don't try to use him to get what you want out of life. Instead, follow his lead. He knows what's best. May God bless you today. All right, all right. We are back. This is Lady TJ here in TNT Gospel Radio. I have both guests that have called in. I have Brother Leonard Chapman Jr. and Brother um, Bobby L. Green Jr. Welcome to the show. Hey, man, good to be here. Thank you, thank you, guys, for uh, for um, agreeing to come on the show. Um, I just want to talk to uh, to you guys a little bit about um, forgiveness. We've been talking all month about it, and what what is um, your idea of forgiveness? Anyone? Go ahead, brother. Okay. Well, um, I see forgiveness as a as a restoring of a relationship uh, in order for uh, the need for forgiveness. I see something uh, that's been broken. And the idea of forgiveness in the ideal circumstances to try to, uh, to put things back together again. I, I hear, I heard you. You went out on me, Brother Leonard. You're still there, Brad Chapman. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Okay, uh, I guess he, we're going to make sure he get back on. He's still on the line. It's probably just his phone. But um, can you expound on what he was trying to say at least or in your words? Yeah, absolutely. I think that forgiveness um, is is number one uh, a debated topic, yes. um, um, and it, it carries a sensitive subject uh, because there's a lot of relationships that need to be restored. There's marriages that need to be resurrected, yes. um, and uh, the only way that those um, relationships can even uh, get to the point of reconciliation is if we forgive. Amen. Um, and and I and I have to bring up you know the fact that you know daily you know we we seek the forgiving uh, spirit and nature of God um, okay. through His Son's blood. Yeah. And um, the same grace that we ask uh, of God, the same grace and mercy that we we need and seek from God is the same grace and mercy that we should extend to our fellow brother or sister or our, our wife, our ex-wife, our boyfriend, whatever the, you know, the broken circumstance uh, may be. Yeah. Um, there is a, a relief. You know, when you forgive someone, there is a relief uh, of you. You're no longer entangled. You're no longer imprisoned by, you know, whatever has transpired, um, you know, that is going to require uh someone to forgive another person so there's a relief and you you're free and you know you're absolutely right and i think a lot of people may understand that in a sense because a lot of you know a lot of us let's just say let's just use us in general a lot of us um don't want to forgive because it makes it seem like we we are weak or we giving in to the other person how do you explain that well um i i you know, i our connection kind of uh, went back and forth. If you don't mind repeating that for me, I said a lot of us um, we 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 want to forgive, but a lot of our mind our minds tells us not to because it makes us feel weak, and and we giving the other person the 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 glory or the victory. How do how do you how do you explain that? <laughs> okay, no, and that's absolutely right. Um, but we have to understand that there's a lot of folk in the cemetery right now that um, ha have gone on uh, uh, and not allow pride, you know, to be set aside. We have to allow pride to be set aside. We, you know, too often, you know, we, we, we get 
entangled with just some of the most small and simplest things. And really, when you forgive that person, yeah. that that's your own true godliness. Amen. You know, godliness is not about pride. You know, it, the proverbial writer said, right. you know, pride comes before the fall, you know. Yes. And, um, I don't want to fall. I mean, I know I'm a fall, you know, but I don't want to fall because of my own pride. Right. You know, um, so to answer your question, um, I think you yeah. have to allow pride to be set aside, you know, and, and choose the route of uh, true godliness. Amen. Brother Bobby, you still there? Did you still get us? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank yeah, God. No, I'm, I'm still here. I was just listening to Brother Chapman. It was a very fine answer. I just wanted to piggyback on that. And okay. I do think it is. A lot of it is pride, and it's uh, a form of self-righteousness that okay. keeps us from forgiving people. Yes. Um, when someone has done us wrong, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't like to admit it, but we like the idea of being the victim. Yes. Um, there's a certain, uh, that sometimes we receive sympathy from it, and sometimes it can be self-serving. Right. And um, it, it makes right. us feel um, like we have the upper hand in terms of being righteous, and we're the ones that are suffering. Right. Um, yeah. But to actually forgive a person and let that go, um, you're putting yourself back on the same level with that individual. Amen. And, you know, and it's so a I, lot of times. I totally agree. Yeah, it's a lot of times that we, you know, we as, as humans um, don't see that in that way. But what, what are the steps that we can take um, if, if we're trying to, to, to learn how to forgive somebody what 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 can we do as as people, let alone Christians, um, do that we can um, make our peace calling an election sure? Yeah, that's a good that's a great question. Um, two weeks ago, I preached from a sermon um, here in Jacksonville, a sermon topic rather here in Jacksonville at Sweetwater Church of Christ. Okay, um, that was free for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but I, my subject was: Have you lost your mind? Mm. And, and the reason that I chose that subject is because let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. Amen. If we are to have an acquisition uh, of a mind of Christ, if we are to acquire a mind like Christ, which, you know, falls under the category of forgiving, yes. you know, one another, then we're going to have to lose our own mind. Mercy. We're going to have to lose how we operate, how we think, you know, how you know, how we want to, you know, do things day to day. We're going to have to lose our minds in order to gain the mind of Christ. So in order to gain a forgiving spirit, we're going to have to acquire a mind like Christ. Wow. Um, but, 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 I can't say it. Can, Brother Bobby, can you, you want to say anything towards that? Sure, sure. I, I definitely like to add to that. I think one of the things we have to do when it comes to uh, forgiveness, I know it's popular, very popular, and I myself, you know, from time to time, that forgiveness is not so much about the other person as much as about you. And um, I, I would want to temper that statement with saying that forgiveness is still very much about the other person. Right. Because when we take the emphasis off of the person who has done the wrong, mm -hmm. then we don't always see the need to go forgive the person. Amen. But if we recognize that their soul is in danger, and I think that's the first step is dwelling on the fact that if I have not done anything wrong, then it is the other person who's in danger. Yes. And uh, when you think about the passage that Jesus says, uh, I think it's in Matthew eighteen fifteen, yes. uh, if there's someone over uh, more over your brother trespass against you, go tell him his fault. Right. Well, the reason why he wants us to tell him his fault is not so that we can be in a rush to uh, to. To, to disassociate ourselves with our brother or sister, but it's rather to try to, it's an attempt to try to save our brother or sister. Amen. So if we could get ourselves to move off of our own pain for a moment yeah. and think about the consequences of their actions towards us, mm -hmm. then that might help to provide some motivation for us to try to see ourselves in a position of helping them. Um, I believe there's a scripture um, in the Old Testament, I think it's Leviticus uh, nineteen seventeen. Don't quote me on it, but I believe that's what it is. But it says, "Do not hate um, your brother." Yes. Paraphrasing, mm -hmm. but to go tell him his fault. So yes. to not tell your brother his fault, 
to not explain to him the wrong and offer forgiveness is actually a form of hatred. Wow. You you just said something there because a lot of, a lot of us will look at wouldn't look at it like that because most of the time if we think about it we're we're um upset or feel offended by something that someone did and not look at it as a as a uh, as not addressing the situation but then we look at it as um most of us don't even know that the other person is uh, you know upset with <laughs> or offended right. you know so it's it, it behooves us like you say it, it for us to to make make i just like i say make you call it and ensure you know making sure that you know what you're doing um because the other person may not know so how do we fix That's a person right. how do we make a person or myself let's just talk about me let's just how do i get myself right um in the sight of god and my brother or my sister hmm repeat your question please the question is i'm i'm the one that's upset how do i get myself right and i know you guys have have told me little bits here and there but a lot of us sit back and harbor up on those um those issues and we replay them and replay them and replay them how do I believe that I'm not at fault because I didn't come to them first to forgive? Mm. Why I believe I'm not well, the one that shouldn't come. They should come to me. Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. I know Brother Barber uh, got something stored up, but um, um, I heard someone say to that own self, be true. Yeah. Um, we have to take an evaluator. Uh, investigative look at our own self. You know, even Michael Jackson said, "I'm look, look at the man in the mirror." We have to look at ourselves really honestly. Yeah. You know, um, and, and and really, you know, see if 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 I was at fault. You know what? And, and understand from that other person's perspective. Too often we think about us, 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 but sometimes it's, you have to place your shoes in the other person's, you know, uh, feet or whatnot. You know. Um, I, I do believe that we you have to be honest with yourself. Um, and then I, I, I kind of relate it to uh, the analogy. Sometimes we, we harbor things uh, internally that, that don't even exist. Right. <laughs> you know, we, we think that, you know, Sister So-and-so is upset with me, but it's my own personal demons that I'm dealing with right. from day to day. Amen. You know, so we have to. We have to understand that whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, yes. whatsoever things are honest, yes. and lovely and a good report, you think on these those things. Amen. Because sometimes we have the tendency of thinking pessimistically, you know, versus optimistically. So we have to think on those things. Yes. Brother Bobby? Yeah, I, I would definitely say the same thing, too, is that... Uh, you know, a lot of times, once again, I think Chapman alluded to it earlier, is that it's our own pride, um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's our own self-righteousness yeah. uh, that keeps us from going to people, letting people know that we're offended. And another thing I've learned, too, is that sometimes people are not really sure. Right. And this goes back to pride again, because if I go to a person, and then, you know, I'm given an explanation mm -hmm. uh, for their behavior, and I find out that I misinterpreted something, uh, well, that makes me look bad because right. here, here it is. I drew an assumption right. about something, and I wasn't quite sure. But as long as I don't confront the situation, I can harbor it. What What makes us? And so, but what makes us not move forward like that? What makes us not want to seek to forgive? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> I, I wasn't supposed to stump y'all. <laughs> you go ahead, Chad. Um, what makes us not one more time? What, makes, what us? makes us not go forward to forgive? What makes us, you know, like like um, Brother Bobby was saying, you know, somebody did something and and but we don't think that you know the little things that we said or did offended us or what have you. But what makes us not? look at it and say you know what I need to forgive let me go forward and see if you know to correct the situation what makes us put a halt or stop a pause to to making those changes 
I, I, I would say I think resentment. I think resentment is addictive. Mm. Wow. I think resentment is addictive. Um, you know, you can get that you, somebody you're doing something. Uh huh. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. When you still in something, you 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 be, you can, can become a point where you enjoy that as a form of pleasure, believe it or not. And I think what makes it difficult to move on is once again, resentment helps us to feel righteous. And if I'm already feeling bad or I have not dealt with my own guilt in Christ Jesus for my action, just like people use man-made works for righteousness or other things to build up their self-esteem, oh. resentment can help us do the same thing. Really? And it keeps, it keeps the emphasis off of me and my own spiritual lack of my personal relationship with God because now when I see when I've elevated myself to this victim status, well, I'm comfortable mm -hmm. here because this is an area where, hey, I may not do all the right things, but at the same time, look at what has happened to me. Right. And so I almost feel like there's a sense of balance here. Mm. But to move out of that victim status or victim mentality, I have to begin to acknowledge that I myself may be a culprit sometimes. I may be a perpetrator of wrongdoing. Wow. And that and that, that's, that's, that's that makes me equal <laughs> which makes me equal with my abuser. Wow. That's that's very profound. Yes, Can I pull you back off of that? Um, sure. I have two things actually. Number one is, and I will explain this, your alignment determines your assignment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you go to a surgeon uh, for, you know, for surgery, you know, he makes an incision. Right. You know, but part of the incision, he's going to make an excision. He's going to remove any abnormalities and any uh, cancerous uh, cells or uh, any tumorous cells as, as well. And so when you relate it back and make it relevant in a spiritual sense, sometimes we have to cut our own selves with the Word of God, you know, um, cut ourselves. He said it's a two-edged sword. So we've we got to cut ourselves, and a lot of words to cut ourselves, and we got to remove whatever abnormalities, uh, uh, envy, malice, uh, resentment, like Brother Green said, you know, uh, uh, anything that's going to cause us to stumble and get us out of alignment with, with God. You know, but our alignment determines our assignment in the simple fact is that if we're, if we're if we're out of alignment with Christ, God can't assign us to greater words. He can't he can't restore relationships. He can't resurrect marriages because our own selves Amen. are out of alignment. With and 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 that was going to be my that you guys are really hitting it on the head and it's is really profound because I was going to go to the next topic, which was relationships, because a lot of marriages or in any kind of relationship, it's hard to forgive when they, you know, the spouse is cheating or um, someone is doing something outside of the marriage. You know, how did how do you get to the forgiveness part of of all of that? Because that those are I, that's why I said steps. It, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of steps. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, so how do you how do you work on relationships that okay? Let's just do f relationship forgiveness. How do you get people to look at marriage differently when once they before they got married and then when they got married it became different, really different, and then people go outside the marriage. How does the other spouse forgive that person? Chapman, I'm gonna let you comment on that first. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, it, it has to, you know, I mean, it's pretty deep, you know, it has to, you know, go back to um, how God forgives us, yeah. you know, uh, daily, and, and I need it daily, right. you know, um, secondly, um, it's a very touchy situation when someone goes outside and so forth, um, but as I mentioned earlier, the same grace and mercy that we, we seek from the Almighty God, Jehovah. Yes. Um, and if either says it done, let's, let's be real about it. You know, um, we, we have to find somewhere, if we, if we have a mind like Christ, yes. you know, then we have to find somewhere within us to forgive. Um, you have to be strong enough to forgive, you know, when you've been hurt. Yes. You know, and, and I'm reminded of, of an older gentleman. He said, you don't know how strong you are until that's your only choice. Yes, yes. 
That's a that is such yeah. a true statement. Um, bro, bro, Bobby, you okay over here? <laughs> Say that again now. Are you are you okay over there? <laughs> you want to add anything? To oh it? yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I, I, oh yeah, I'll add to that. Um, I, I would just say one of the statements I made earlier is that ideally, forgiveness is the restoration of a relationship. Mercy. And um, and that's what we should always always seek, but it is not always possible. Right. Um, there are some relationships. That, that sometimes they cannot be mended, but it doesn't necessarily mean that forgiveness has not taken place. Amen. Uh, I draw an analogy between God's relationship with Israel mm-hmm. and him establishing a new covenant with the church. Amen. Well, he had a covenant with Israel. Israel broke the covenant again and again and again Absolutely. and again. Yes. He was long-suffering. He was patient with Israel. Mm-hmm. But there came a time where Israel was unrepentant, mm. and God did not continue his covenant with Israel. However, forgiveness was still offered to Israel like forgiveness was offered to everyone else. Yeah. And he forgave Israel. Amen. And so I think we do have to acknowledge that there are times where that relationship will not be mended, but it still does not mean that I cannot forgive a person. Amen. And it doesn't mean that I have to harbor hatred or ill will in my heart. Amen. Amen. Do, know, can, can a person forgive and forget forgive and forget yes I, I would think it would mean I would think it depend on what a person meant by forgetting okay you know do you um, think we always I think ha- it's very well possible you know you watch two children argue and fight and fuss right or even a husband and a wife yes and they may not speak to each other for a week and yeah. then when they make up, they can't even remember what they were arguing about. That's true. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> so, so sometimes, sometimes it happens that way. But sometimes the thing can be so painful. You know, I I think about people um, that have, have sat in my, you know, counseling office who have been, you know, mistreated at some point in their lives. Yes. And there are just some pains and some abuses that you will never forget on a cognizant level. Wow. But I think what Bible talks about, I remember their sins no more. It's not that there's no recollection. Right. But that I will no longer hold Ugh, that yes. person um, accountable for that wrongdoing because I now forgave them. Amen. Amen. Brother Chapman, you want to add to it or are you good? Um, well, you know, um, I actually, um, you know, was just thinking about it. Um, you know, a lot of people are hurting. Yes. Um, a lot of people have been hurt. Yes. A lot of people have hurt people, yes. you know, uh, and that. Um, that is going to require healing. Yes. Okay. Um, but part of a component of the healing means that the damage, it, healing is, it means that the, da- it means basically that the damage never existed. Yeah. It just means that the damage no longer controls you. Amen. That Amen. that was key. <laughs> that was key, and I think I think with 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 all of those explanations, that that was profound right there because that's what it is. It's it's a form of control within yourself. You know, um, if you really look at it, it's it's you holding yourself hostage um, to the situation. Did I get anything? <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm just checking with y'all. Y'all y'all got y'all radios up too loud or something. I'm just checking. I hear my voice. No, no, no. I'm I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually in and out of the office. Um I will have to go back into the office. I'm I'm working on okay. time out. Um but um I, I thank you so much for the opportunity. Anyone, uh brother uh Green, it's, it's good to hear from you again, sir. Um uh, yeah. anyone listening, may may God bless you, may God keep thank you really, you. really good. And uh, whatever the Lord is doing in this season, I know he's not going to do it without us. Amen. Amen. So thank you for for coming on the show, and I appreciate you so much. Absolutely. You have a great fun Friday. You too. All right. Okay, Brother Bobby. It's me and you. It's me and you, Brother Bobby. (laughs) All right. right. I'm going to keep you for a few minutes, and that's it. And I'm going to be done with you, and then... I'm gonna do your, you know, you do these these, I call, well, you got it as words of wisdom. The words of wisdom is something that I don't know how I got connected to you. 
um, on Facebook, but I did, and I ain't gonna question it because God does His thing in His own time, and how He does it is the way He does it. What motivated you to do this this kind of thing? Well, I'm always seeing things on Facebook mm -hmm. um, that you know are encouraging, and um, I thought that I would just you know it started off really simple that I would just put a verse or two. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, a couple of years ago on Facebook, I was cut and paste devotions right. from different websites and um, you know I would give credit to whoever it was and just and just use it as a way to encourage the church and right. um, I thought about well, maybe I could write my own one day okay and um, but I didn't want to do something that I didn't think that I could keep up okay on the over the long haul right so uh, but anyway I gave it a shot and um, I started off with just using a proverb and then um, I wanted to move out. The approach that I take is I try to take a common thing, mm -hmm. something that's just from, from everyday life. Yes. And then take that, something that all of us can acknowledge to be true to a degree, show its relationship to everyday life, and then end it with a scripture that so people who may be not as familiar with the Bible say, oh, man, that's actually in God's Word. Right. And, you know, just use it as a way to encourage people. I, you know what and it, it does it really I, I don't know if you really look at all the comments and all the likes that you get but I know and all the suggestions because everybody else out it you know we put our little two five cents in too so uh, <laughs> yeah. we put our two five cents to help add on to it so that you know we helping you know that's that one accord thing you know unity um I, I I I asked you on Facebook, could I read it out? I'm going to do it at the end of the show because I usually do a, a devotion at the end and and give my thoughts. But I'm going to use yours today. So you're going to get some credit by, by me. You know, I, I just, I love what you do. And I love that you encourage others. So uh, you got to tell me. Thank you. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. So you got to tell me what's going on at the congregation and where you're from. I should say where you're from and what's going on at the congregation so we can know what what's going on and we can maybe attend or not attend. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, the, the, always, always open. Okay. Um, I am originally from the Orlando, Florida area. Orlando is where I grew up, Central Florida. Okay. And uh, I started... I started ministering there first, okay. um, and eventually I migrated to Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. And I was there for about good seven seven years or so. Okay. And um, and then I moved to Charleston, South Carolina, um, where we presently are now. Okay. Um. So I worship and minister uh, with the Charleston Metropolitan Church of Christ. All right. All right, and um, and so, you know, we are a a newer uh, congregation. Okay. Um, but we are um, we're on the move, and um, God is doing some great things with us, and um, we are a group that's uh, I would say a liberated group. Amen. Amen. So um, we're trying to enjoy our freedom in Christ Jesus with responsibility. Amen. <laughs> um, but. But that's that's what we what we are about, and um, my ministry is pretty simple. You know, I'm just I'm just kind of a what you see is what you get type of brother. That that's that's all right though. I like what you see, what you get. Yeah. There's no surprises. There's no hidden agendas. There's no you know you just a worker and a servant for the Lord. There um do you have any yeah. upcoming events or um any activities going on at the church? Well um. Actually, we um, have a one-year anniversary coming up. Oh, wow. Um, that will be in, in August. Okay. And um, in this summer, we are planning to have a marriage and uh, family okay. um, seminar workshop, you know, oh. to kind of strengthen our couples, same thing you're talking about, yes. our relationships. Yes. And so, you know, we have those in the motion. We also, um, in the month of June, we have what we call Church in the Park. Oh, and, uh, yeah, last year we had our first church in the park. It was, it was wonderful. We went out to a county uh, county park, rented it out, and had a worship service in a shelf. And it was completely dressed down. Everything was completely casual. As a matter of fact, my sermon was called, Where's Your Church Clothes? Oh, uh, that's all right there. 
Where's your church yeah, clothes? Yeah, we talked about church clothes, and I explained to them that church clothes is not suit and tie, but church clothes is, is righteousness and uh-huh. peace and patience and Amen. meekness and humbleness. And these yes. are the real church clothes, and if we have these church clothes on, yes. we'll have our church clothes on all the time. Amen. Oh, you got to come back to the show one day. You do have to come back just to talk. I might have to find a topic on, on the church clothes stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm just, no problem, no problem. I'd love to talk about it. No I know, problem. that's right. I appreciate you. I thank you so much for taking your time out to do this. And thank you for liking my Lady TJ Midday Devotion page, my Facebook page. I appreciate you. Oh, you're you. welcome. So I thank you so much. Um, you are always welcome. If you see me post something, say, you know, uh, Sister Johnson, I, I want to talk about that a little bit. You know, I want to talk about that. Can I come on right. your show? You know, if you have some ladies that want to talk about it, bring them on. I'm all open. I will do that, Miss Charles. I will really do that. Okay. Thank you for having me on your show today. All right. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Bobby L. Green Jr. <laughs> and the other one was Leonard. Leonard. Chapman Jr., thank y'all so much for taking the time and, and, and being on this show, Lady TJ, on TNT Gospel Radio. Coming up next is some music, and then we're going to close you out because guess what? It's Fun Friday, and I'm going to still stay fun, and I'm going to give you the, the, the thought of the day by Brother Bobby L. Green. Have a great day. Be right back.
Okay, this is Lady TJ here. Thank you for tuning in today to to close out the power of forgiveness. Thank you to Brother Leonard Chapman Jr. and Brother Bobby L. Green Jr. I'd had two juniors. I, I didn't realize Junior Jr. Okay, um, in the house talking about the power of forgiveness. I just want to read his um, word of um, wisdom for the day. It says, smooth seas don't make good sailors. If you're going to be a good sailor, you you got to know the seas. No one likes tough times, but tough times make tough people. Sometimes life um, selects you to be a tough person. See, not every not everyone can handle what you can handle. So your toughness points you to a great purpose. And its purpose is not to make you a better person, but make you a better leader. You may not think of yourself as a leader type, but if you have been through some things, you have the ability to lead others through that same something you yourself have been through. And no doubt, life will call you out at some point in to leave, some point to leave. And yes, you will be the person for the job because life would have prepared you as well prepared you well you would you would know how to sail through the rocks and the corals coral reefs you would know how to deal with sharks and whales you would know how to deal with the pirates and some of the other um the own crew committed mutiny you know how to deal with the typical storms the tropical storms um and and being blown off course i'm sorry you know how to deal, how to, to sell because the seas ain't always been smooth. There are some things you can't learn from the book. They will only be learned through seas of life. That is from Brother Bobby L. Green Jr. And he went into first um, James 1, 1 and verse 2 and 3. It says, 2 says, consider it pure joy, my brother and sisters. And whenever you face trials and many, many kinds, because you know the test of your face produce perseverance. So I want to leave you with that. I want to thank you again for tuning in. Tune in on Monday. We are talking a new subject. That new subject is about jealousy. Jealousy. I'm going to post the picture so you can you can talk on my Facebook page now. I have a Lady TJ Midday Devotion page. And we can talk about it. You can give me your thoughts. I can put them on air and read them out loud. I don't have to say your name if you don't want it to be gone. If you have any show ideas, just let me know. Hit me up on the Lady TJ Midday Devotion page and I will Facebook page. And I will definitely put it in consideration. So, y'all pray for me. This is, um, this is the funeral week. I want to pray. I need y'all prayers for the golf family and myself um, that we we just seek God. We just seek God through all of this. This is Lady TJ calling it a day. Always remember God is still in control. I got to go. Love you. Peace. Let me guess. Uh, 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 uh,